Joining me today is American linguist, thinker, author of over a hundred books, cognitive scientist Noam Chomsky. Uh, every day, the United States and Israel are violating international law on this issue. Uh, the UN Charter, which anybody cares, bans the threat, threat or use of force in international affairs. Uh, every time an official says all options are open, that's a criminal act. Uh, you're not uh, here, nobody cares. We're supposed to be able to carry out criminal act. Actually, there was a dramatic illustration of that yesterday. The, if you read yesterday's New York Times, big front page article on the capture of Al-Libi, the jihadi uh, target in Libya, Read down to the bottom of the article. Uh, there's a quote from the Secretary of State who's asked whether, in a press conference, was this legal? And he said, yes, it's legal. It's in accord with American law. Uh, that means American law says we can go into any country we like and kidnap somebody we want, and that's legal. Of course, is that uh, anybody else's law? You know, suppose... Uh, Al-Qaeda or some other country, say uh, Yemen, whoever, comes to the United States and kidnaps John Kerry. Is that legal, uh, if it's legal by their laws? Uh, what this says is, we claim that we own the world. What we decide applies universally. Doesn't matter what international law is. No one else has these rights. An honest report would have had this as the headline and would have explained what it means. But nobody's going to comment on that in the United States or England or probably most of the world, most of the West at least, elsewhere they met. But these are very important facts. Why do we not see more Americans scrutinize uh, NSA spying, Obama's drone campaigns, clear violations and things that you have certainly people abroad criticize in the U.S. for? Why is it so quiet back home? Because the security, it's a frightened population, and the security argument has weight. People feel that somehow the government's protecting us. I mean, take, say, drones. Uh, the drone campaign is by far the biggest terrorist campaign in the world. It's not never described that way, but it's, of course, what it is. Furthermore, it's a terrorist-generating campaign from the highest levels and most respected sources. It's recognized that the drone attacks create potential terrorists in quite a substantial scale. Uh, so therefore, it is a threat to U.S. security, quite apart from being a terrorist campaign in itself. Almost never discussed. Uh, take the invasion of Iraq. The invasion of Iraq was undertaken with warnings from the intelligence services in the United States and Britain, both the attacking countries. Intelligence services warned that this is going to increase terrorism. It did, by a huge factor, according to government statistics, by about a factor of seven the first year. Does that help security? Well, that other reasons to invade Iraq, not security. Most of the media coverage and the U.S. government line in the United States is that drone strikes are very precise and they target with surgical precision particular militants and terrorists. What we have documented is that drones kill not only terrorists, they kill many others, they kill civilians, they have killed women and children. We went to Pakistan in two separate investigation missions to speak with people who themselves had experienced drone strikes. The result of our research is a report entitled Living Under Drones. We were particularly concerned about drones because our own government is involved in using drones and we believe there has not been adequate oversight of the use of drones and the basis for deciding who gets killed, where, and when. We gained access to 
to the people in what's called the Fatah region, the federally administered tribal areas in Pakistan. That's an area that is cordoned off and into which virtually no one can enter. We were able to speak to people from that area who came out to other parts of Pakistan and to interview with us. <laughs> One of the things we found is that there are entire communities who live in areas where drones are flying overhead 24 hours a day, seven days a week at times. And these people don't know when those drones will strike. They don't know who will, they will strike. The result is symptoms of psychological disorder, of trauma, of severe anxiety, and of dysfunctionality. We heard stories of people who won't leave their houses. When we interviewed psychiatrists and psychologists who had treated people with these symptoms, they said that a number of people displayed very serious symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. We may not have declared war on Pakistan, but for the people living in northwest Pakistan under drones, they're in a war zone. One of the things we found and documented were incidents of double tapping. There will be an initial strike on a target and then very shortly after a secondary strike. What has happened in the period between the first and the second strike is that neighbors or people nearby or family members or in some cases doctors have come to assist those who may have been injured and still survived. And when they're doing that, a second drone has hit. The people with whom we spoke in the communities affected, almost without exception, told us when there's a drone strike, we won't go near afterwards. And we even heard this from some medical professionals. It has made people extremely angry at the United States. The New York Times recently uh, classified drones in a piece as the new Guantanamo, the new recruiting tool for Al-Qaeda. One of the things we heard from several people is that they didn't know what America was before drones. And now what they know of America is drones, death, and terror. One person we interviewed asked me, do American people know what these drone strikes are doing? Do American people know the strikes are killing civilians here? And people said to us, we want you to go back, now that you've spoken to us, and tell the American public the impact that drone policies are having. Through our report, we would like the American people to understand 
that the narrative that they have heard about drones is not accurate. That drones cause death to civilians, they terrorize entire populations, and they may well be counterproductive at many levels. We need to rethink our policies in light of the disastrous impact the drone strikes are having on the people who live under them. Hello, um, I'm ringing to tell you that there's a peaceful protest taking place on the runway at the airport, the main runway at the airport at the moment. I'm telling you that for safety reasons, in case there might be a flight or anything like that there. Can I tell you who's calling, please? Uh, my name is John Maguire. Sorry, can you say that again? John Maguire. M-A-G-U-I-R-E. U I R E, yes. And your message is what, John? Uh, to say that there is currently a, a small peaceful protest taking place on the main runway at the airport. I'm telling on you that for, for, for safety reasons. I'm, yeah, I'm saying that. A small peaceful protest taking place yes. on the right now. Yeah. Okay, John, thanks. You're Bye -bye. welcome. Bye bye. Margaret, Margaret is sitting down. Good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah, they're getting into the van now, Ed. Yeah, yeah the red one. We need to get out of here now. Today is the 11th anniversary of the war on terror beginning, the attacks on Afghanistan and we wanted to mark it. We wanted to mark the fact that uh, m millions of people have died. Well, over a million Iraqis have died. Uh, thousands upon thousands of uh, Afghanis and Pakistanis. We don't know how many civilians have died in Afghanistan or Pakistan because they, they don't seem to be important enough uh, to be counted. So we went out to say that the Irish state, consecutive Irish governments, 
our uh, accessories to mass murder, our accessories to torture and kidnapping, and we wanted to express our objection to that. We also, seeing as that it's an international week, highlighting the issue of the killer drones over Pakistan, over Afghanistan, over Yemen, and over Somalia, we wanted to say there should be no drones being uh, trafficked through uh, Shannon Airport, and that was the reason we were here, because we know that drones are going going through. If they're going to Afghanistan, if soldiers are going to Afghanistan, if weaponry is going to Afghanistan, then you can be assured the drones are going there. And we are calling on our government, the, in particular the Labour Party, who claimed they were opposed to the military use of Shannon for the USA, to stop this traffic of murder and death. We will be continuing this in the court because then you will have to answer my questions. Oh, OK, like, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, one of them said the reason why they don't search the planes is they right? only do it if the Minister of Defence asked them to do it. And they kept on saying, is, you could have been killed. And I said, the reason why we could have been killed is because you allow the military in. No, because you allow the military in. If you didn't allow the military in, then we, we wouldn't have to do this. So don't blame us. It's your fault. And I also said the Guards Corner is meant to be there to protect Irish civilians and a civilian airport, not the U.S. military. And what do they say to that about Russia? Well, they look. Huh? They look. They look at me. Yeah, yeah, but no, no... Uh... Well, they, but in the course they're going to have to comment on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also the amount of money that's been spent anyway. in protecting the military against us. Yeah. And the austerity and the billions, trillions that have been spent in destroying the world. And no war is ever won. All these wars are futile. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. nothing is going to come of it, and yet everything has been destroyed. Villages have been destroyed. The resources have been destroyed. The people have been destroyed. When Bertie was going, Bertie Ahern was going over to make his great address to the uh, the um, Washington government in the in, in Capitol Hill. His plane was searched. His plane was searched by the drug people, the U.S. drug people, to make sure he wasn't carrying anything, uh, uh, any contraband. So we're saying they should be searching the um, U.S. military planes, the U.S. transport planes, which are definitely transporting weaponry and, uh, and death. We did what we had to do, yeah. which is what I told them. If you did your job, we wouldn't have to do this.